The next problem is f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 1 over x minus 1, and it wants to know what's the limit as x approaches 1. Okay, so graphically, let's take a look at this first. As I approach it from the left, I'm, I'm looking at the graph here. As I approach x equals 1 from the left, my y value every single time seems to be negative 1. So as I approach it from the left, my function value, f of x, approaches negative 1. As I approach it from the right, let's look at that right hand side. I'm coming in from the right. What's my y value every single time? Well, the y value seems to be approaching the function value or the y value seems to be approaching 1. I should have put an arrow there. It's actually equal to 1, but um, we'll still say it's approaching 1. So notice from the left it's negative 1 and from the right it's positive 1. Well, one of the definitions, keys to the definitions in a limit is it has to be the single value that it approaches. And here we have that it's approaching two separate values. If it's ever not in agreement, if the left and the right are not the same, you would say the limit does not exist. So here it says, what's the limit as x, f of x approaches one? I'm gonna put d and e here for does not exist. Again, why does it not exist? Because the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right. These two things need to agree. It needs to approach a single value. We need to put this into the chart though in the table because on the test, we're not gonna be given a graph. So how would we handle this problem if we needed to do a table version of this? Well, one thing that stinks about our calculator, and it's pretty much the only negative thing that I found out about this calculator so far, is that it does not have an absolute value. It does not have the capability to do an absolute value. So we need to remind ourselves, what is an absolute value and how does an absolute value work? Well, here's the idea. If you consider the function, the absolute value of x minus one, this is gonna be broken into two parts. If this value right here, let me show you, if the inside of this is positive, then it just returns back the numbers. So for instance, the absolute value of five is five. So if whatever's on the inside is positive or zero, then it returns the exact same number. X minus one would be the exact same thing as the absolute value of X minus one. If it were a negative number, if I were to get a negative number on the inside, for instance, negative two, it would actually return the opposite. So it doesn't say the absolute value of negative two is not negative two the absolute value of negative two is the opposite, which is positive two. So if you put a positive number in, you get a positive number out. If you put a negative number in, you get a positive number out, the opposite. So let's look at that. Let's consider the inside of this function here. I need to consider when is this function greater than or equal to zero? When is it positive or when is it zero? Well, that would be x is greater than or equal to one. So anytime x is bigger than or equal to one, I get the exact same number out. Because if x minus x is greater than or equal to one, the inside is positive, so it just returns the exact same number. Anytime it's less than one, it would be a negative number on the inside. The absolute value of x minus one, x minus one would be a negative number. And if it's the negative number for any time x is less than one, then it returns the opposite. Whew. Little bit confusing, but that tells us that we have two functions to work with here. The two functions that we have to work with, this is called a piecewise defined function, we have two different cases. We have if x is greater than or equal to one, if x is greater than or equal to one, it returns the exact same thing. And then we have if x is less than one, it returns the opposite, so it would be the opposite of x minus one. That's what it would return. So that means if it's positive, it stays the exact same. If it's negative, it's going to change the sign. So that's what we've shown right there is we have two different functions when we have the absolute value of x minus one. So let's go back in and let's look at this. Consider the function f of x equals the absolute value of x minus one over x minus one. Well, what happens? We need to consider this top portion right here. We know this breaks into two cases. If x is greater than or equal to one, this is equal to x minus one over x minus one, which is just the value of one. Because if it's positive on the inside, if x is greater than or equal to one, so this is if x is greater than or equal to one, that's what it returns, the exact same thing. Let's consider the second case. What if x is less than one? 
If x is less than 1, then it does the opposite. So that's negative, or the opposite, of x minus 1. So the x minus 1 simplify in this case, and this would be negative 1. So what's our real function here? Our real function is two different cases. Our real function has two different values here. This is a piecewise defined function. Our two cases are if x is greater than or equal to 1, and if x is less than 1. If x is greater than or equal to 1, we just determine that the value it's always going to return is 1. And if x is less than 1, we just determine the value that it's always going to replace or give you is negative 1. That's exactly what we see in this graph here. Anywhere to the right of 1, our y value is 1. And anywhere to the left of 1, our value is negative 1. So that makes it a little bit easier to plug in the values here. We know what the function is. We, we know at 1, it's undefined, does not exist. But we know anywhere to the right that it has to be 1, and anywhere to the left that it has to be negative 1. So again, when you see this, from the left, your f of x value approaches negative 1, and from the right, your f of x value approaches 1. Okay. Again, they're not the same. And any time they're not the same, that means the limit does not exist. Again, for the limit to exist, both of those need to be the same. Since it's not the same, they don't exist. Okay, let's check this out right here. What about this, this graph right here? Okay, this graph right here shows us uh, there's a hole, but it's also defined somewhere else. So look at it graphically. What's happening from the left? Well, as I come from the left, it seems that my y value is approaching 1. And as I come from the right, it seems that my y value is also approaching 1. So from the left it approaches 1, and from the right it approaches 1. So I know that the limit as x approaches 1, because the left and right are the same, doesn't matter what happens at that point, only near that point, the left and the right both approach a y value of 1. So let's see what this is. A piecewise defined function here. If it's equal to 1, the answer is 0. Again, it doesn't matter what happens at that point, though. If it's not equal to 1, then it's the exact same y value. So if I plug in 0 0.9, I'm going to get 0 0.9. Then I'm going to get 0 0.99. Then I'm going to get 0 0.999. That's because I'm just plugging it into the function f of x equals x. So you plug it in, you just put the exact same x value. Same thing over here on the right-hand side. If I plugged in 1.1, I get 1.1. 1.01, I get 1.01. 1.001, I get 1.001. Again, notice from both of these directions, my y values, as I get closer and closer to 1 from the left, is approaching 1. And on the right-hand side, my y values, as I get closer and closer to 1 on the right, my y values also approach 1. Because those are the same, we know that is our limit. Because those are the same, we know that is our limit. Okay, so what I want you to review now is I want you to step back and look at examples A, B, and C here a little more in depth. So in the first one, in A, we, we can have three different cases. In A, what we had was the function was undefined, so you couldn't just plug in the number. In B, we have that it's undefined, but we also have the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right. So we can't just plug in the number, and we can't just look from one direction. And on 3, or on part C here, we could plug in the number, but the number, the y value, at that number, when x equals 1, was actually 0, whereas the limit was 1. So what does that mean? Really what that's emphasizing is it doesn't matter what happens at that point, it only matters what happens near the point. Really, really important. We can't just plug in the number necessarily. We also can't just look from one direction. The left and the right have to be the same for the limit to exist. And you've got to be really careful. The limit might not be the same as the function value. So let's take a look at this. It says, from the previous three examples, we notice the following. Saying that the limit as f of x approaches l, as x approaches c, 
means that f of x may be made arbitrarily close to the number l by choosing x closer and closer to c. So for instance, if we said the limit was 1 when x equals 1, I can get closer and closer to a y value of 1 as I get closer and closer to an x value of 1. So as you move closer and closer to x, you get closer and closer to y. Number 2, it says if f of x approaches the same number from either side, then the limit of f of x as x approaches c exists. However, if f of x approaches a different number from the right side as it does from the left side, then the limit of f of x as x approaches c does not exist. So what does number two here say in, in non-mathy terms? The left and right have to be the same. If the left and right are the same, that's your limit. And if they're not the same, then the limit does not exist. Let's read number three here. It says if the value of f of x when x equals c has no bearing on the existence or non-existence of the limit as x approaches c. It says, for example, in 3a, the limit f of x as x approaches 1, even though, the, so it says the, the limit, it, sh, it says exists, but it says, should say does not exist, even though the function f is not defined at x equals 1. Sorry, the limit exists, but the function does not exist. So what does that mean? doesn't matter what happens at that point. It only matters what happens near the point. So left and right must agree. doesn't matter what happens at that point. only matters what happens near that point.